also going to provide a lot of shelter for the guppy fries when they when they get laid, when they get born, when they get pushed out. Happy Boxing Day, everyone! To those who are not familiar with the concept of Boxing Day, here in Australia and I think in Europe and UK, we celebrate Boxing Day. It is the day after Christmas and traditionally, back in the days of yore, um, it was the one day when the lower caste, the servants, um, would receive Christmas boxes or gifts from their masters. Um, so it, it is a public holiday here in Australia. Um, but because it falls on a Saturday, which is today, the 26th is a Saturday, um, we then get Monday off because this public holiday falls on a weekend. So we make Monday, which is going, which would have been a working day, a public holiday. I know, it's freaking awesome, isn't it? The lesson of today's episode is procrastination is the mother of inaction. Now, I have this, and I'm sure you've seen it, this aquarium that's been sitting in my background for as long as you've probably watched my vlogs. Um, that has been there for years and I used to have silver perch, I used to have Siamese fighting fish or baiters. However, about a year and a half ago, I had silver perch and uh, shubunkans, um, goldfish. And I Whoa, moved wait. all of them out into into my aquaponic system in the backyard, so into IBC2. So most of the fish, most of the silver perch and the goldfish that you see in there, like fatty, um, is was originally from this tank. So this tank has been sitting here for one and a half years without being emptied, without having the filter or movement on. So that water has stagnated for over a year and a half. It smells disgusting. It has this chemically almost repugnant decomposing smell to it whenever I turn the filter on because it's stirring up the water and that water is rancid now. So what I'm forced to do is completely empty that tank and even give the, the gravel a bit of a clean. What this has done for me is given me the opportunity to reinvent this space. Today, you're gonna see me empty that tank Fill it up with clean, fresh water, um, which I've taken from an external tank. So I have 300 litres of water out back, which has been dechlorinating, been aerated for quite a few weeks now. Um, I'm going to take most of that water in here. I'm also going to be taking quite a few litres of water from my aquaponic system. So that water is once again already jam-packed full of beneficial bacteria. Um, and I'm going to start the circulation process. I also went to a local aquarium shop and bought some special um, bio material which you add into new setups and it's just going to help you build and boost that bacteria colony. Um, and that's going to help speed up the um, nitrogen cycle process. And based on my calculations with the, the fact that I'm using old um, and established um, aquarium water using um, a bio starter material, I anticipate that this system will be fully cycled within one to two weeks. So I'm adding a heater to this. So that is going to bring up the perfect temperature for bacterial growth which means that in one or two weeks, I'll be able to stock it with fish. However, before that happens, what I'm gonna do is, we have some dead space back there. I don't know if you can see, I'm trying to see the screen back there. What I'm gonna do, apart from this being an aquarium, I'm starting an experiment. This is gonna be my first indoor, fully sustained aquaponic system. That's right, I'm turning this tank, this aquarium, into a fully supported aquaponic system where the grow bed will be the external filtration system. It's going to be the, the bio filter where the bacteria is going to convert all that ammonia into nitrite into nitrate and the plants are then going to consume the nitrate. And what my ideal vision is, by the time this is built and fully set up and fully cycled, I will never ever have to do water changes in this aquarium. Sit back and watch this montage of me emptying that aquarium and then moving it and um, filling it back up again.
done. So the water has changed. I put the heater in. The um the the canister filter is working perfectly. The water's flowing. It's starting to clear up. Um, so it was quite murky before. So this is 50% um, external um, tank water that I've been collecting and 50% um, dechlorinated water. Um, I've also been out to, this, um, to the um, aquarium and I bought some low maintenance, fast spreading uh, aquatic plants. Now, plants won't be that quick in terms of growing or spreading because I will not be artificially um, fertilizing the plants, nor will I be adding carbon dioxide or CO2. Well, what do you think? I apologize for the buzz of the um, air pump, um, but the diaphragm is freaking loud. Um, as you can see, I've got the repurposed breeder box, which um, pumps water from the primary tank and dumps it into the breeder box compartment, which I filled with clay balls. Um, and I've planted a pothos in there or a devil's ivy. At the moment, there is no fish, so there's not a lot of nutrients. Um, however, when I planted the hair grass, it came in little pots and the hair grass pots itself had some um, nutrients in there, had some um, aquatic plant fertilizers. So that's kind of just spread through the system. So that should give just enough juice for the pothos to, to really get settled. Uh, pothos is one of those um, indoor plants which do really, really well in um, a water environment. Uh, I'm going to talk more about it in future episodes and I'm going to show you other traditional indoor plants which can be repurposed for the aquarium or for a completely aquatic or water-based um, uh, growth media. As you can see, this is stage one of the repurposing of my aquarium, of my tank. Um, I've planted a few um, aquatic plants. I'm going to be ordering a, a bit more online. Hopefully they'll come through. Like I said earlier, I'm not using CO2 and I'm not deliberately going to be using aquatic plant fertilizer. So I'm not expecting exponential growth. got a floating piece of polystyrene, cut it so it's the perfect dimensions for my grow bed or my tank. And I've got some of these pot nets, which um, I think a lot of indoor plant aquaponic, 
aquaculturists use to um, grow and cultivate their aquatic plants. Um, hydroponics um, places also sell them for hydroponic plants, um, but I use them in all my outdoor aquaponic setups. Firstly, we're gonna wash all the soil off the roots. You wanna get it really clean, get as much of it out as possible. The plants that I have here are strawberries, brocoto chili, pawpaw, mint, and goat's cola. Goat's cola or um, memory or arthritis plant. It is actually delicious in salads and because they send out tendrils and they, I think it's just gonna look really nice when it droops over the side of the tank. You have to be very careful with the chili plant because its roots are very, very fragile and it's relatively shallow rooted at this stage. This is a Rokoto chili. It's one of the very few that will actually survive Melbourne's winter. Um, this plant is from um, last year's harvest. I harvested from a six year old Rokoto chili plant. Um, I think close to 200 chili seeds, um, like chili fruits. I have mint growing wild in our front yard. Um, our neighbours know that they can come whenever they want just to walk down the driveway to pick mint if they're making themselves a mojito or they're cooking a dish. River Song, get out of the beds! <sighs> that black and white devil thinks she owns this backyard. Actually, truth be told, she owns this entire property. These pawpaws um, germinated from seeds of a delicious fruit we ate a few months ago. Oh, look at that. My only concern, and I'm voicing concern now, my only concern about the viability of all these plants indoors is whether the cheap UV light that I bought um, has sufficient full spectrum capabilities to support all these plants. The reason I like using clay balls, um, like most people in aquaponics, is once again, we're giving the beneficial bacteria lots of surface area to grow onto and to increase their population size. Um, and even though it is a floating raft, um, we have the ability to really maximize um, beneficial bacteria growth. Also gives our plants, our seedlings, um, the ability to really anchor their roots in. So there we go, that's our first pawpaw. What do you think? I do have a lot of lettuces and mustard greens currently germinating and once they're at an age where they are old enough to be transplanted, I'll move them in here. Young lady, excuse me. Oh, young lady, can you stop? Ah! Well, there it is everyone. My indoor aquaponics guppy setup is complete. We have a 150 litre three foot tank here, completely chockers with aquatic plants, which will help oxygenate and reduce um, ammonia and um, nitrates. Um, we have four orange guppies in there at the moment. We're just using them to acclimate and to help boost um, the production of ammonia in the short term. In, in a month or so, I'm gonna purchase my dream, dream guppies, which are tuxedo koi guppies. I, I, I cannot wait to get them. Um, we have a sponge filter in there. We, and truth be told, we don't need a sponge filter because of all the bio filtering and mechanical filtering and aquaponics filtering. Um, the reason I have the sponge filter in there is because I'm actually setting up another um, uh, uh, aquarium system in, in a couple of weeks and I wanted that sponge filter to start building um, bacteria populations so that when I move that into the new setup I can fully immediately cycle that system. Um, as you can see here, we have a combination of Anubias, we've got Wisteria, hair grass, a lot of lotus. I've planted a few just to provide a nice kind of background because I don't have a back panel. I'm hoping that in time it's gonna grow longer and it's gonna provide a beautiful hedge. Um, it's also gonna provide a lot of shelter for the guppy fries when they, when they get laid, when they get born, when they get pushed out. 
what we have there on the right hand side is a repurposed breeding box. What I've got is Peace Lily growing on one side and Pothos or Devil's Ivy growing on the other side and once again they're there to help provide another layer of buffering where they'll absorb ammonia and nitrate. Now that grow bed originally was going to be filled with expanded clay balls. Um, however, we te I tested that last night and it just didn't work in this setup. So I converted it to a raft system where the water is primarily filled um, three quarters. There is a an exit um, pipe when that water level reaches a height and then it's going to empty into the tank, clean filtered water. Um, however, it's because it's a bell siphon, it's actually going to aerate it. I don't know if you can see, um, there's bubbles created from the water from the grow bed back into the tank. So this is a quick and dirty video. I didn't really go to the process of teaching you how to make it because once again, this is all the byproduct of whatever I have lying around in my house. I have the 75 litre um, container lying in the house. I had the floating polystyrene in my house. I had all the um, um, grow pots in my house. All the plants are from my garden. Um, the, the breeding box I already had and I just repurposed it. Um, the only things I bought were um, the aquatic plants and the guppies. Everything else was from my garden. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this. If you have any questions, if you want to know anything more about aquaponics in general or how to set up your system in into an indoor aquaponics aquarium setup, just message me below. Leave a comment below. I'll reach out to you. Alternatively, you can hit me up on Instagram. My Instagram tag profile name is Tim and Leanne. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Cool, so um, for now, hooray!